So I just want to tell you a little story. We wrote this article about four years ago, Chris and I, uh, and Dr. Werlop out in Chicago, uh, or uh, Dillon, Colorado. Uh, he's my partner in the gate, guys. Uh, the problems we face are a product of what we have done to our feet and to the world around us, and what we have done to shoes for the sake of what we thought was progress. Remember, poor foot function impacts every aspect of posture, stability, and movement, and if one foot is off just a little bit, or the wrong shoe is chosen, the body will have to, to compensate to alter the balance point and alter function. It could be the cause of recurrent pain and physical problems. So let me tell you a little story. We wrote this article, which was embraced by a couple companies, and uh, we're writing part two to this now. And you may have seen this around the web. It, it traveled uh, pretty, pretty well. Back in the caveman days, things were different. The foot was unshod. And from the moment from the first step until one's dying day, and thus the, the foot uh, developed and looked different, different than the westernized foot. And we're going to look at some pictures of uh, unshod people and then the western foot and then we're going to see why there's some shoe fit problems with that. The sole of the foot was thicker and callous due to the constant contact with rough and offending surfaces thus preventing skin penetration. The foot proper was more muscular and it was wider in the forefoot. The toes were slightly, uh, likely slightly separated due to the demands of gripping which would obviously necessitate increased muscular strength and bulk to the foot intrinsic muscles. It was the constant input of, of, of uneven and offending surfaces such as rocks, twigs, mud, foliage, and debris that stimulated the bottom of the foot and thus the intrinsic muscles, uh, sensing joint positions and relaying those variations to the brain for corresponding descending motor changes and adaptations to maintain protection and balance. Wow, okay, it's a lot of stuff, and I'm only getting started. The brain has something, it's mapped out by something called the homunculus. The parent company of the gate guys is called the homunculus group, and it's a brain trust of some physicians around the country. Um, and a homunculus is basically a mapping. And if you've ever seen a homunculus, it looks like this little man or woman with this massive head, massive lips, massive tongue, and huge hands and feet, and stick arms and stick legs. The brain is represented that way. The more dexterity and sensitivity you have, the larger the representation in the brain. So your feet, your hands, face, lips, and tongue have the largest brain representations. So you've got small areas with a lot of neural input because there's a lot of dexterity and, 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 and whatnot. And the feet are one of them. So we need to be thinking about this when we're doing major changes to a shoe, to uh, dropping someone down from a beast into an adrenaline, to a, uh, you know, a, a ravinia, to a, a ravine, excuse me, to, uh, you know, down into a, an echobiome, etc. You need to understand that big, huge changes are going to have major input changes into the brain sensory-wise. That sensory information is going to have a motor impact on the way out. Good information in, good information out. Bad information in, bad information out. So um, what we did was to the foot over the years is we started putting it into a nice, soft, cushiony, dry, warm spa. Okay the brain had to make some adaptive changes to that because this is something that when the foot hits the ground the whole rest of the body has to make an adaptive change and so by changing the foot and what happened we will see some things changed. However, as time went on man decided to mess with a good thing. He took a foot that was highly sensitive, a virtual sensory organ with a significant sensory and motor representation in the brain and he not only covered it up with a slab of leather or rubber but then he flattened and then paved not only his world but also his home so we took all of the sensory stimulation away. Everything's flat. So we took all the sensory information away from our environment and then we covered up the foot. So is it any reason why we see all these foot problems? I had the pleasure. Current research has been conducted showing that plantar, meaning bottom of the foot sensory feedback, plays a central role in safe and effective locomotion. That goes back to that homunculus. It's a huge sensory receptor and we're covering it up. More shoe cushioning can lead to higher impact forces on the joints and higher risk of injury. Please listen to that. More cushioning is leading to more injury. 
Journal of Biomechanics, I think two, uh, 2002 and 1998. And I've got these journals. You email me, I'll send you the journals. Showed that more cushioning led to more impact forces. I know that doesn't make sense, but think of it this way. If you jumped off of your dresser onto a tempur bed, okay, and then tried to step off of that tempur bed, imagine that. You can't move forward until that tempur mattress fully decompresses to the point where there is a rigid interface where you can push off now. If you just put a thin layer there, you'd come down and push off quicker. So there's a time issue there too. So more cushioning isn't better. Remember, my foot is on the ground for a certain amount of time on each, uh, each uh, during the mid-stance phase of gait each time. So when the foot is on the ground and I now add more cushioning, it means I'm tapping into a longer stance phase, which then changes the swing phase. You can't make these changes. The foot was not meant to do to have all this cushioning, and especially underneath the heel. So unshod without shoes lowers contact time versus shod running, kind of what we just talked about, that there are higher braking and pushing impulses in shod versus unshod. We just talked about that. If you're having to cushion into this thing longer, it's going to change the way the push-off phase. That shod feet tend to abuse heel strike and suffer its consequences. That unshod running presents a reduction of impact peak force that would reduce the high mechanical stress that occurs during repetitive running that the unshod foot induces a neuromechanical adaptation which uh, could enhance the storage and restitution of elastic energy at the anchor ext ankle extensor level. Wow, what's that mean? It's just changing the biomechanics, okay? Putting a shoe on, putting more cushion under the foot, adding another insert that wasn't even designed for the shoe that another company made to throw in the shoe because their insert is better than the one that came in the shoe changes the mechanics of the shoe. That's going to change the mechanics of the organism that is in it, okay? And you can't expect that that change is going to be good all the time. It's only, it is not only what uh, shoe you put on the foot, but what foot you put in a given shoe. That's kind of the, the whole summary of this, this whole lecture. You got to understand what you're putting in there, but you also under, have to understand what you've got so you can make a better choice of what you're going to put in the shoe. So. Uh. <laughs>